Salonots, and welcome back to Salonis' Solo Spirit. We are here in Munich, Germany, coming to the end of day two of 25 different segments. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined with Rob Strache for all the fun, and it has been fun, right? It's been educational. <laughs> yes, it, yes, it has been educational, but learning can be fun, and what a way to tee us up for these next two guests. From William and Mary, Arturo and Monica, thank you so much for taking the time thank to you have us. Thank you. We're all a little ways from home as Americans. How's the week going so far for you, Monica? It's been fantastic. It's been a whirlwind. <laughs> yes, I can, I can imagine. I can imagine. Arturo, tell me a little bit about what you two do at William and Mary. Yeah, so we're both professors there in the School of Business, uh, and we do research, and we're working on this particular research on. Um, Process mining, working with an NGO, uh, juvenile justice uh, Texas system to, uh, you know, try to optimize some of the the processes and the efficiencies in the system. So this is both from a research perspective and from a teaching perspective. We are uh, professors in the MS uh, in business analytics, right? Uh, so I teach in the courses on big data. Yeah. That's got to be a popular program right now. I don't think data's ever been hotter. I'm, I'm really excited to have you both on, and I'm glad we could do this because, I mean, process mining comes out of research. We had Will on earlier to talk about it. W without, acad without academia, none of us are sitting here, quite frankly. So, Monica, tell us a little bit more about the project that you're doing in Texas. Let's, let's get into it. How is, it, how is process mining going to impact people in this particular use case? So this is part of um, a collaboration with a company called Evident Change. Uh, I'm, I sit on their board, and um, I reached out to their head of research, who's Aaron Espinosa, who presented with us yesterday. And we were specifically looking for a type of data set for a special issue in a journal. <laughs> so that was sort of how we started. And uh, she started to describe the project for us, and it had all the flavors of stuff that we love, the challenges that we love. Two data sets that weren't meant to be combined, so essentially data from juvenile justice, from the Department of Justice, and data from mental health, that's essentially claims data from Medicaid. Um, it's already 10 years old, but the problems haven't changed, right? So we looked at it as a potential for a pilot. We initially made it a machine learning project, and then, when we started to look at the, the results and we started to describe what features were important, um, Aaron, our partner, said, you're not predicting what the kid is going to do. You're predicting what the system does to the kid. Oh. And when I heard those words, I'm like, oh, God. Uh, right? And I, um, we have been a Salonis partner for a long time, uh, a center of excellence, and I said, I think we have a tool <laughs> really look at this. So we started to put the data in, we asked the learners for help, we got a ton of help, and the insights have been amazing. How, how has that partnership really grown? And you said you've been partners with them and their academic alliance for a while. How, how does that really work? So Andrew Lieberman was one of my students, and he worked for Salonas, and he, uh, right after he started working for them, he reached out and said, would you do a capstone? We put our students in three-week projects. Uh, where they do nothing else but the project. And so, I tell you, you've worked with a capstone. Why don't you yeah. talk a little yeah. bit about it? Yeah, and well, once you use these tools for teaching purposes, right, then you start making connections back to your research. And we just realized, you know, it's almost like we can use some of these techniques for this other project we have, right? And, and it's all about using the right tool for the right task, right? So, the ML approach, it was just not the right approach to tackle this particular problem with. So uh, it was nice to be able to, you know, learn how to do it, teach the store students, apply it uh, with, you know, company data, data real-world problems, and then just saying, hey, we could use this technique and solve these other problems that will impact the lives of so many children. Yeah. Like what we like to call wicked problems, right? Yeah. Yes. You know that coming from Boston. He's speaking wrong. He's speaking wrong language. I, as you've both been talking, I can I can feel it not just in my brain but in my heart. And and I say this 
lovingly towards our great nation. The United States is not known for its mental health care. That is, that is not our strongest asset as a nation. And, and, and particularly some of the systems that exist can, can really repress young people in a lot of different avenues, not just in, in juvenile detention or, or programs like that. What have been some of the insights, Monica, I'm going to go to you first, that you found that were able to become actionable and, and change the trajectory here of what's happened? So, so one of the very first insights we got is that there was a really high correlation between having touched the mental health system and staying in detention or in that system much longer, sometimes 10 times longer, and how many times you reoffended. And we dug deeper, and what we found that is that a large percent of that percentage of that population wasn't getting the right type of mental health. So they were prescribed A, and they were getting C, probably around cost. We don't know for sure. We're, we're digging into that still. So that was really sort of eye-opening to us, that one of the biggest ones, where are they getting the right type of mental health? Another thing that was almost heartbreaking is how many times um, it just essentially escalated. They were Class C misdemeanors, which means they're not important or hard crimes, but they, they just probably annoyed the local law enforcement, and eventually it just started escalating. And, you know, we had one case that the kid, after 10 years, start enters the system at 13, and at 23, he's in prison for possession of marijuana. So, and so have there been other things that you've learned about? Because, again, you said you started out with ML and going down that path. People, we, we see this in our research that we do, that you really need to understand uh, really the processes before you can do things with AI. And I know ML was AI before AI was Gen AI and everything. But right. is that what you were seeing in the data? And from the because people here, like a lot of the platform in Salona is being able to ingest things from so many different systems, be it Snowflake or Databricks or other databases and things like you know, SAP and uh, CRM systems. Is that one of the things that you see as a benefit to yeah. working with them as well? So, so that's a very good question because, like, you know, we we must think in terms of process, right? But what happens is that sometimes the reality is that we just have fragmented systems that we think of it as different silos. And even just connecting the data coming from all these systems, it's very hard. Like Monica just talked about two specific systems, juvenile justice and mental health. But there's like no unique ID that identifies the same children in both systems, right? So there's like a monumental... Totally siloed. Yeah, yeah, so it's a monumental effort in connecting this. Yeah. But you need to understand the process. And you mentioned the, the case of Chris that used uh, had bipolar disorder and needed medication and the accuracy of the treatment was not there. But how do we scale from one children when we have more than... 200,000 children, right? Yeah, there's 175,000 Chris's in the Right. Uh, so it's very set, hard, right? like, unless you have Erin or other um, uh, team member, right, from Evident Change, she was a probation officer. She was able to take the time to learn Chris's story and push him to be, you know, a better uh, person in society, right? But, like, it's not scalable when the workload of these case workers is ever increasing. So this is where tools like uh, Thelonis, once you know how to ingest this data and you understand the process, you change that mindset from system to process and you're able to solve this problem. You're connecting the dots. You're connecting the synapses there, so to speak, within, within a system. When I think of, and I come from the Silicon Valley, when I think of well, now quite large companies, companies valued at $13 billion, like Salonis, I don't always think of them as the most accessible to reach out to, to collaborate with on a project of this scale, especially in academia and students. It's not always the most lucrative environment, so it should be. It's the same we don't value education more. What has it been like partnering with them, and, and, and what would be your advice to, say, other researchers out there watching this interview right now thinking, wait a minute, we could really use a tool like that to help us, to help us build that out? Well, my sales pitch is always like, 
I mean, I will train some people for free for you. <laughs> <laughs> Which is essentially... Love that. Reach out to Monica, y'all. Reach out. You heard it here first. Yeah. So we are training students in process mining and explaining to them that this is the future. We heard process intelligence yesterday. Yeah. I like in almost all my work to partner with, with industry because it's where the real problems are, right? So my... Um, advice would be use your student network. Like if your students work in those places, reach out to them, explain to them what you're trying to do, and they they can be your real advocates. I think as we gave them a good grade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with driving with good grades if it leads to great results. <laughs> yeah. It changes the lives of our young that people. That was a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> but but I, I think what was interesting is that it, it has tangible outcomes as well. It wasn't like, hey, we just did this in a, in a vacuum. It, it really has impacts. How have you been able to give feedback back to Texas? So we have not. Oh, okay. So we we are using this as a pilot. Okay. No, this is a pilot, and now we are going to go speak to people, right? Okay. But it, 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 we have shown, we have demonstrated the power of a 10-year-old data set. So the first problem we always have is getting different agencies to give us data. Uh, um, right? Not just the software, but the data. <laughs> and these agencies, like, they're optimizing for for their outcomes that they like, of right? So now we're showing them what there's an even better outcome that you need to combine data sets. We now have proof that it can make a real difference. I can imagine that's the type of thing that could scale across a lot of different, not just the Department of Justice, but... Oh, yeah. I School mean, of Education. Right. Department of Education, yeah. I mean, we're thinking about, we, we talk a lot about, hey, I'm total addressable market here, but hypothetically, be every young person. Yeah. That's pretty. That's pretty powerful. Arturo, what are you hoping happens next with this project? So it's very interesting because we just came from another session of another NGO, right? Completely different context, but you see similarities, right, on how you tackle the problem, how you think of the problem, how you unpack the problem, how, you, how do you solve it. And, you know, in our case, it was just two projects that were using object-centric process mining, right, to, to be able to merge sort of like objects coming from different systems. And it's object is not the, like the right connotation here because we're talking about children, right? right. Uh, that object connotation is more like in a traditional uh, business sense, right? But I think once you on top, right, once you sort of like create those templates, it just gives you other opportunities to other government officials, other researchers to say, hey, we're almost like talking about the same language. We're just it, the context is different, yeah. right? Um, so, so that's exciting, right? Uh, I think, uh, as I mentioned before, it, it's it's all about like finding the right tool for the right problem, right? And before, I didn't know like the whole process mining and how you can leverage event log data to tell the story, right, of a child in this case, right? And I think that's where other people will say, hey. I have a different context, but it, like I could do something similar. It, it's pretty mind blowing when you unlock that, right? Yeah. When you realize how many different things could be dependent upon each other and, and trigger different sorts of events in the future. You know, we think about it as saving money or adding value or, or shipping things faster, no delays on a plane. We're talking about completely changing the trajectory of an individual's life and, and giving them the support they need. Ooh, I like, it almost makes me emotional being able to say that. <laughs> I got one last question for you both. This is both fabulous. You're obviously stars of Salisbury as well. When we have you back on the show next year, all right, one year from now, what do you hope to be able to say then that you can't yet say today? Wow, that we were able to impact policy. Yeah, baby, let's go. I love to hear that. Well, Arturo, anything to add? Yeah, that's the most important, right? Yeah. I think we just unveiled what can be done show some of the inefficiencies by identifying some metric KPIs that you can look to optimize for, and that will hopefully enact new policies, right, that can change the lives of so many people. And the other aspect is that, you know, almost like evangelize the, the whole idea of, like, here's something we did. Do something similar, right? Like, change the lives of other people in yeah. whatever domain you work like on. Like a chronically sick patient. Can we get a whole picture of them? Oh, gosh. I mean, talk about, we could go on for days <laughs> about <laughs> that. But you're, but you're absolutely right. And I think it, legacy systems, and I say this as well, the government is definitely a legacy <laughs> system as an organism, can be incredibly hard to change. And, and leveraging data like this is, is going to have that kind of impact. 
Dr. Carol Monica, thank you for all the life-changing work that you're doing. This is a, a fantastic you. story, not just with these young people in the future, but also with your students. Shout out to all of them at William & Mary. Good yes. uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We look forward to having you back on the show. Rob, always a pleasure to share the stage here with you. And thank you all for tuning in to our fabulous two days of coverage here at Salona Stella Spear. We're in Munich, Germany. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching The Cube, the leading source for enterprise tech news. Thank you.